We've been playing badminton since we were really young and we've lost hundreds, actually probably thousands of matches. And most of the time, these losses have ultimately come down to one thing, making more mistakes than our opponents. But how do you make less mistakes? And why is it that on one day you play really well and another day you don't? Well, we're now gonna share eight reasons why this might happen and give you some simple tips of how you can improve your consistency and win more matches. We've all probably experienced nerves or being tense before or during a match. You feel like your feet are stuck to the floor. You're holding your racket so tightly your shoulder starts to ache. Everything just feels off. And this tension can happen for many reasons. You might think that you've prepared really well, so you should be playing better than last week. Or you just really want to beat that guy because he's in the team ahead of you. And then you play terribly and make loads of mistakes. Badminton is such a mental game and we're not robots on the factory line who can perform the same tasks day in, day out without ever making a mistake. Sometimes when you've trained well all week, you've eaten well and you've slept well, you play bad. But other times when you've had a terrible night's sleep and you're a little bit injured, you play really well. Well, this is strange, but it's basically because you have no expectations and you just relax. But how do we avoid making mistakes when you are tense and nervous? Two things we would say, apart from to relax, that's pretty obvious, is to firstly focus on enjoying the game and remind yourself that that's why you play. This is so important right from a beginner to advanced level. And it's certainly something that we still remind ourselves of before nearly every match we play. And the second, which is more technical, is to start by focusing on moving your feet and the rest should hopefully follow. Generally, when you're tense, the first thing you do is stop moving. So rather than focusing on everything you're doing wrong, moving your feet is a good place to start. We actually want to do a whole video dedicated to dealing with nerves, so keep an eye out for that in the future. Now, the next mistake leads nicely on from this, and this is thinking too much about your mistakes. It's well known that if you think about something, you're more likely to see it more, and this is called the frequency bias. For example, you think about buying the Victor Thruster F, and then you start seeing them everywhere. So if you're always thinking about making easy mistakes, then all you're gonna see are easy mistakes, causing you to tense up and quite possibly make even more as a result. Yes, so instead, be positive and change what you say to yourself. It might be something extremely simple, like over and in, or you might remind yourself of your strengths. For example, I always remind myself to keep using variety in my overhead shots and not just smash everything. Yeah, and not enough people do this, so it's really important to keep reminding yourself of these things in between points. Otherwise, before you know it, you've lost five points in a row. And this brings us on to our third common mistake. How many times have you come off from a match and thought, what happened there? That went by so fast and I can't even remember most of the points. Don't worry, it's definitely happened to us too. This is why it's so important to take your time in between points, to reset, remind yourself of the game plan and focus on the next point. Yeah, and there are a few strategies you can use to help slow down in between points, such as take a drink, mop up some sweat on the court, or use a reset cue like our good friend Toby Penty does. As you can see, Toby looks up before the start of the point to remind himself to focus on this upcoming point, not the previous one, and to stick to the game plan. These techniques can help you to avoid making lots of mistakes in quick succession, which happens so much in badminton. Now getting technical, our fourth way to avoid making lots of mistakes is to improve your racket position in your preparation. There's actually two points to this. Firstly, and quite simply, if you're waiting for the shuttle with your racket down here, then you have to bring it from here up to meet the shuttle, which wastes a lot of time. It will mean that you're going to be taking the shuttle slightly later, which puts you under more pressure and means you're more likely to make a mistake. Getting this point right also gives you more options of what shots you can play. From down here, you can only play a lift or an upwards shot, whereas from here, you can play downward shots and drives. This means your opponents can't step forwards like they might if you're taking the shuttle late, which can often put you under more pressure, again, causing you to make a mistake. And it's important to mention here that sometimes we get into these positions and think, oh my gosh, I'm so early and I have so many options, and then you panic and hit it into the net. And this is where you need to have clarity of thought and not tense up. The second point looks at your preparation just before you hit the shuttle. You want to try and get into a fixed position so that you're in control of your racket and your body and therefore less likely to make a mistake. If you look at the difference here, you'll notice we are reducing the margin for error by getting into this fixed position before hitting the shot and it's a lot more accurate and consistent as a result. And this is for most shots you play. Just make sure you don't misunderstand this and slow your swing down or have a robotic or predictable technique. 
And there might also be times where you make a mistake because you want to play a certain shot, but you're just not technically good enough to play this shot. So point number five is the most obvious, but probably also the most important, and this is poor technique. Yes, your racket positioning can come into this like we've just mentioned, but technique covers every shot you play. Mistakes on your serve, for example, can come down to how you hold the shuttle or having a big swing. And it's the same as your overhead shots. If your racket is facing the wrong way or your feet are in the wrong position and your feet being in the wrong position is actually a common problem. It's so common, we we're actually very close to including footwork as a standalone reason for being inconsistent. But at the end of the day, footwork is part of your technique. And we've already covered a lot of different techniques on our channel if you want to watch them after watching this. So mistake number six is trying to play perfect badminton, aiming every single one of your shots to hit the line or just go over the net. Instead, you need to allow yourself some room for error. Just think, would you rather hit nine lifts out the side or back and one perfect lift into the corner, or 10 lifts landing around here every time? Of course, the better you get, the less room for error you give yourself. We still don't aim for the lines, do we? No, we aim just inside to give us some margin for error. And sometimes you might feel like you're not trying to play perfect badminton, but you're still making easy mistakes. And this might be due to a lack of purposeful practice. When you're trying to get better at something, research indicates that there are generally three levels of progress. Level one is gear acquisition, such as buying a new racket. Level two is learning, such as watching our YouTube videos. And the third is deliberate practice, which is actually putting in the work. Each of these levels of progress give you satisfaction, but on different timescales. So buying a new racket gives you an instant reward. Whereas purposeful practice, you generally have to put in a lot of hours before seeing a reward. But everyone likes to see instant progress. So a lot of people suffer from gear acquisition syndrome. But unfortunately, buying loads of new rackets isn't gonna make you the next world number one, compared to if you actually put in the hours to become a better badminton player. And we get loads of messages saying things like, thanks for helping me improve my game and win more matches. But whilst we love these messages, it's not us that's doing this, it's you. You're the one going out and putting in the hours of practice to implement what you might have learnt when watching one of our videos. We, as professional badminton players, have always known the importance of purposeful practice, but we were recently reminded of this importance when we were watching a Skillshare class on how to build habits that last by Thomas Frank a few months ago, where he outlined these three levels of progress. This class had so many useful pieces of information that are related to becoming a better badminton player. And we came away from watching this class feeling really inspired, so we wanted to share it with you all. And this video today is actually sponsored by Skillshare. So if you want to watch this one hour class, then click the top link in the description or the pinned comment below. Skillshare is an online learning community with loads of inspiring classes. And the first 1000 people to use our link will get a one month free trial to Skillshare where you can watch any of their classes. And if you were to decide after your free trial that it's not for you, then you can cancel with no charge. But with so many helpful classes being added regularly, we think it's a great place to learn and develop both new and existing skills. Yeah, and by joining with our link, it really helps us to be able to continue to make these videos. So thank you in advance. And thank you to Skillshare for sponsoring this video. Okay, so you now understand the importance of purposeful practice, but how do you actually do it? Well, one exercise we've incorporated into our training almost every week for the last several years is an exercise called 25s. This is where you choose an exercise and you hit 25 shots in a row. But if you make an easy mistake, you go back down to zero. This adds a bit of pressure, which hopefully is similar to the pressure you'd feel in a match. Remember, you need to practice to perform. The exercise forces you to be consistent. If you get to 24 shots and make an easy mistake, you don't wanna be trying to hit perfect shots in your second attempt, because you'll probably be pretty tired by this point. So here are some examples of exercises you can do in 25s. And remember, consistently putting in the work is what's going to help you improve your consistency over time. You can't just do one training session with purposeful practice and expect to be consistent afterwards. And to get the most out of your training, you need to be consistent with everything. And this is our eighth mistake, being inconsistent. Let us explain that a bit further, as you're probably thinking, of course a mistake of being inconsistent is being inconsistent. Well, here we're actually talking about the consistency, or sometimes inconsistency, of your daily habits. This includes things such as your warm-up, your diet, how much you sleep, plus a lot more. And being consistent in these can reduce any external variables that might impact your performance. Exactly. As we mentioned before, you'll have good days and bad days, but if we can just do what we can to reduce the reasons why we have the bad days, then it might just lead to more good days. There's no point eating a salad and going on a run the day before a tournament when you've just eaten pizza and ice cream and not trained for the last week. And this all comes down to developing good habits. And this is a topic we're both really interested in. 
Atomic Habits by James Clear is a great book for anyone looking to build good habits. And there was actually another great lesson in the Skillshare class by Thomas Rank, all about habit building. So don't forget to check out that class on Skillshare. We really recommend it. Now, please give the video a like if you're going to use one of these eight tips to help you become more consistent. And don't make the mistake of not smashing the subscribe button if you haven't already. And we'll see you on another video.